Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to cover chapter 9 of the financial accounting course and uh, chapter 9 is about liabilities. So in the previous chapter we covered assets, types of assets and how to depreciate, amortize or deplete assets where we basically convert part of this asset into expenses. Liabilities have a different uh, structure as you know uh, and you know in the balance sheet liabilities come uh, the second item after assets uh, essentially liabilities include two main forms we have current liabilities and we have long-term liabilities Under current liabilities, as uh, you are supposed to know by now, we have accounts payable, short term notes payable that um, mature within one year. Uh, we have a current portion of, uh, of loans or of long term debt. Um, we have accrued expenses. When we say accrued expenses, we are uh, referring to interest payable, salaries payable, taxes payable, and so on and so forth. And, you know, we still have the uh, last item, the unearned revenue, which remains a liability up until you provide the service or deliver the goods, and then it converts from a liability to a revenue. Under long-term liabilities, we have two main items. The one that you all know, the bank loan. And we have something called bonds. And this is the main interest, our main interest in this chapter. Mind that current liabilities are those liabilities that mature or that are due within one year. Usually we compare current liabilities, usually we compare current liabilities to current assets, where current assets include cash, uh, receivables, receivables mean you have account receivable, not receivable, uh, maybe inventory, all of these are compared to current liabilities, which include accounts payable, notes payable, current portion of, of long-term debt or loans, accrued expenses, and unearned revenues. You, uh, you, you want current assets to be greater than current liabilities so that you can tell the company that the company or the firm is in a healthy financial position or in other words the company is liquid enough liquid enough to uh, pay or to uh, commit to its financial obligations in the short run so in order to assess our our um, uh, our, our our financial health or financial position we get to compute two ratios or two measures two measures to assess the financial health or liquidity of any company the first one is called the working capital and working capital by definition is equal to current assets minus current liabilities and you want this to be more than zero greater than zero which indicates that you are liquid enough to meet your financial obligations in the short run the other um, metric or measure is the current ratio and this current ratio is basically very similar to the working capital but instead of having a spread or a difference you have it as 
a ratio. And of course, for assets or current assets to be greater than current liabilities, you want this ratio to be greater than one. And therefore, you'd say that I'm in a healthy financial position. Um, so this is a brief introduction about liabilities, types of liabilities, what they include, each one of them. What's the importance or the analysis that you can make or some of the analysis that you can make from the distribution or the structure uh, of, of your liabilities when you compare it to assets and how to assess whether this company is being liquid enough or not. Now, to get to our um, main uh, concept or main issue in this chapter, which is bonds. Let me first introduce bonds uh, at a very broad, uh, very broad level or concept. Bond is a contract or a piece of paper which is a contract between so a contract and we call this contract a financial security or a financial paper or a financial paper okay it's a contract between a borrower which is usually the firm and a creditor who is usually the bond holder so the guy or the party that holds the bond is called a bond holder and this party is the creditor the bond holder gives the money to the borrower and receives in return interest for this money okay so he borrows the firm borrows the money for a specific period of time and then pays interest over time at the end of the date of the maturity date of this bond the borrower pays back everything to the creditor and throughout the period the borrower will be paying interest i'll explain this in more details in a minute so let's assume that the borrower borrows one thousand dollars from the creditor so this bond has a value of $1,000. The creditor wants um, from the borrower an interest, an annual interest of 12%. So this is the annual interest. Whenever you see I without any further specification, it means it's the annual interest. Okay, always the vast majority of the times, interest is given at an annual basis. Now, this bond has, hypothetically, like six coupons from uh, up and six from down. And they are numbers, numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Of course, you could have told that it's, it's it includes 12 coupons in reference to 12 months. So each coupon... Of the of those is a monthly interest payment so what happens assume that the borrower wants to borrow this one thousand dollars over five years so those are five years from zero till five this is one then two three one two three, four, and five. I made this one uh, the first year longer so that I include one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So those are the uh, number of months in the first year. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so those are months in year one okay what happens here at time zero at t equals zero the borrower gives the creditor the bond and takes one thousand dollars as a long term 
that we have agreed before that anything that matures after one year it's a long term bet is regarded as a long term bet so at t0 the borrower gives the creditor the bond the creditor is the bond holder and the borrower is the borrower it's the, it's the firm after one month the borrower will pay the creditor so after this is the first one after one month the borrower pays the creditor the monthly expense interest expense interest expense which is equal to the principal value this is called the principal value so this is the principal value or face value of the bond and most of the times and you can take it take it for granted in this course that it's always one thousand dollars if you want one million dollars you will issue simply the firm will issue one thousand bonds which means one million dollars so the principal value or the face value so face value or fv multiplied by i multiplied by time the face value is one thousand dollars the interest is 0 0.12 which is the annual interest rate and multiplied by time it's 1 over 12 right because it's only one month out of the annual time therefore which is equal to $100 so at the end of each month um, sorry this is not this is $10 not $100 so at the end of each month, the borrower will pay the creditor $10 as an interest expense. This will remain the case for the rest of the five years. At the end of the, five, the fifth year at t equals five, the borrower pays the creditor the face value and takes the bond back on top of the face value the creditor the borrower will pay the creditor the last interest payment which is the 12th 12th month at, on the fifth year, at the fifth year okay this is the concept of bonds it's simply a loan which which has a specific uh, terms of, of interest payments and payment of the principal value you need to know that the frequency of paying interest might differ between bonds some bonds uh, have a frequency of payment as monthly some of them quarterly each three months some of them are semi-annual and some of them are annual for the rest of the chapter we'll be dealing with bonds that pay interest over six months so the interest will be paid twice per, per, per year twice a year uh, the last thing that I want to uh, stress on, be stress before before uh, moving into the numerical example, is that the accounting um, the, or the life of the bond, the life of the bond includes four main accounting transactions. The first one is the issuance of the bond. And this is where the borrower issues the bond to the creditor and the creditor gives the money to the borrower. The other one, the, let me call it the semi-annual interest payment. Semi-annual interest payment. And remember that this might be quarterly, monthly, it doesn't matter. But in this chapter, we'll be dealing with semi-annual interest payments. If this semi-annual interest payment passes through the end of the year, we need to have an adjusting entry, which accrues or accruing 
interest expense. And this is the uh, main accounting transaction that we'll be explaining in a minute. And finally, retirement of the bond. Retirement of the bond. And this is the, the very last thing. This happens at T equals 5, where the borrower gives back the uh, creditor the money and the creditor gives the bond back to the borrower. So the bond is retired now. It's out of service. One more thing. The, the bond, bonds have five, uh, let me call them characteristics or, fa or fact five factors, five factors. The first factor is the principal or the face, so this is one, face value. And normally it's $1,000. The other factor is the annual interest rate. And this is usually the I. The third factor is the, um, the maturity date or the maturity, which is time. So in, in my initial example, it's five. So the maturity of the bond at time zero that it matures after five years at time three it matures after two years and so on so maturity or time uh, number four uh, we call it the frequency of interest payments and in in this um, course we'll be dealing with semi-annual annual payments finally number five which is a, a very important factor let's take two extreme examples uh, a company that is really doing well and they have a very good investment opportunity so let me call it a good company or good firm so they are doing well, they have a very good reputation, and they have a very promising investment opportunity. And a bad firm that is suffering financial distress and uh, might go bankrupt. Those are the borrowers, right? The firms are the borrowers. If they want to issue bonds, and the principal value of each one of them wants to issue one bond, just for simplicity. So they want to raise $1,000. If we have a pool of creditors in the market, okay, thousands of creditors, and those creditors want to invest their money in bonds, so they want to lend their money to either the good firm or the bad firm. Automatically, they will choose to lend their money to the good firm. Right? So the bad firm if this firm still wants to grab the attention of these, these creditors, what options does this firm have? The first thing that should cross your mind is that they will be willing to sell their bond at a lower price. So they are accepting today to get $500, for example, and return it after five years as $1,000 on top of paying the interest payments because they are uh, desperate. They don't have any other options. No bank would lend them. They are running bankrupt. So they are willing to sell their bonds at a discount. So discounted price. However, a very good firm that is paying good interest rate and there is no risk the creditors might be willing to pay even more than $1,000. So they will pay $1,200 today and get it after five years as $1,000, given that they will receive interest payments and they will enjoy peace of mind. So these creditors who invest in a good firm are risk averse. They are avoiding risk. However, those who invest in bad firms, they are 
risk takers. They want risk because it, it might give them a much higher return from 500 to 1000 is 100% return, which is an amazing return on top of the interest payments. Okay, so the fifth item that we need to take into uh, account or the fifth factor when it comes to bonds is the price. Okay, and the price is determined by the risk, by the interest payment, and by the maturity. You don't have to understand how the price is determined. You just need to know that not all bonds are traded at the principal value or the face value. Some bonds are traded above, which, which is called a premium bond. Or some and some um, bonds are are trading below uh, the the principal value or the face value, and they are called as a discount or discounted bonds. Okay, so the price we have three cases: P is equal to the face value, P is greater than the face value, and this is the case of the premium. And finally, P is less than the face value, and this is the case of the discount. If you are uh, curious to know this case, when, where the price is equal to the, uh, the face value, we call it trading at par. Okay, a bond, a bond that trades at par, it has a price that is equal to the face value of this bond, or the principal value of this bond. This is everything you need to understand about bonds and about the cycle or the life cycle of the bond. The rest of the um, of the explanation will, will tackle the accounting aspect of the life of the bond. What should we do when we have an issuance? What should we do when we have uh, an interest payment? How do we accrue interest expenses and how we retire a bond? Okay. Um, my example that we'll be dealing with throughout um, throughout the rest of or the remaining of the of the lecture. So a firm issues one million dollars uh, worth of bonds, and automatically here you know that if the principal value is one thousand dollars of these bonds then the firm would issue one thousand bonds so one thousand bonds because we know that the um, the face value is equal to one thousand dollars so a firm issues one million dollars worth of bonds on september or let me leave it not september on october on October 31, 2020. Okay. The bonds mature after 20 years. So, which means that the borrower will have to pay the creditor back his money or her money on October 31, 2040, after 20 years. Now, the interest rate is 12%. The frequency is semi-annual, so paid semi-annually. And the bond is trading at par, which means that the price is equal to the face value. The question says, record uh, the required accounting transactions on October 
2020 and this is the issuance of the bond then on December 31 2020 and this is the adjusting entry so you will be accruing interest expense um, then you will have April 30 2021 and this is the first interest uh, payment and finally October 31 2040 retirement of the bonds okay I need to explain a couple of things before we start the um, the accounting transaction transactions the first thing you need to know is that assume that this is um, October 31 2020 we know that from October 31 2020 up until October 31 2040 we have 20 years and we'll be paying interest semi-annually so we have 40 interest payments so this is uh, let me say this is April 30 2021 so this is exactly after six months right from here to here so this is the first interest payment then you will have October 31 2021 second interest payment uh, then April 30 2022 third interest payment so uh, let me call this i1 i2 i3 up until you reach i40 so we have 40 payments of interest right unfortunately for us the interest payment from time zero to from october 31 to april 30 it passes through the december so this is December 31, where we close our accounting cycle. So close accounting cycle. And we know that when we close our accounting cycle, we need to tell everyone, everyone means stakeholders or investors, that we owe our creditors two out of the six months of interest, right? So, from October 31, you have November and December. These are two months out of the six months in total. So, you owe your creditors two out of six of the interest payment by December 31. So, the, the, the accounting transaction here will be that you need to incur your interest expense and to tell your investors that it's an interest payable. So, you will have a bond interest expense whatever the value is and bond interest payable whatever the value is on april you will pay your payable you will record the remaining of the expense and that's it so cash will decrease and the liability will decrease you will offset this one and your expense will increase as well we will see how this works what I want to say, the last thing, before we start the accounting transactions, assume that you sell your bonds at a discount. And this discount is 3%. Okay? So, this 3% means that the price is equal to 0 0.97 of the face value so there's a discount of three percent you're offering you, you're discounting your bonds so that you attract more creditors you want to borrow money so you're offering this small uh, discount in your uh, bonds so that you attract more creditors 
or to convince them to invest in your company. So this means that each bond will give you $970 instead of the $1,000, which is the face value. Those 30 the $30, the difference, $30 discount should be divided on all interest payments until maturity. This is not payment, sorry, interest expenses. So, for example, let me take this example. The price here that you will receive is 1 million multiplied by 0 0.97. So it would be the price or the cash received is equal to $970,000. Therefore, the $30,000 which are the discount on bonds should be divided equally divided equally on the number of interest expense payments which are 40 we know that it's 40 so $30,000 divided by 40 payments this is equal to 750 dollars which means that my interest expense will be higher by 750 dollars every time i incur an expense okay Every time I incur an expense, my interest will be higher by $750. If, if we want to compute the, uh, the, the annual interest expense, so the annual, let me use um, a new one. So, the annual interest expense in this case is equal to 0 0.12, which is the given, 12%, multiplied by $1 million. And remember that the interest expense is a percentage from the face value, it doesn't matter how much the price is so it means that i'll be paying throughout the year one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in interest every year i'll be paying uh, the creditors one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in interest in interest therefore the semi-annual payment is equal to sixty thousand dollars Right, because over the year it's 120, so semi annually it's 60,000. Now, given that I sold my bonds at a discount, and the discount here was 3%, it means that then my interest expense. will be higher i need to stress a point here interest expense is different from interest payment the interest payment is cash the interest expense appears in the income statement the cash is different from the income statement this is the cash flow statement and this is the income statement just like depreciation, depreciation is never paid in cash, but it appears as a depreciation expense in the income statement. So the, the interest expense, which is higher due to the discount, 
discounted bonds is different from B cash, which is constant. B cash is always 60,000. The interest expense that will be paid, or sorry, not paid, or that will be incurred in the income statement at the end of each uh, six months will be 60,000 plus the 30,000 that we had as a discount divided by the 40 payments. So every time, which are, and those times are 40, 40 payments, 40 income statements, instead of incurring $60,000 as an interest expense, you will be incurring a $60,750 as an interest expense. And this is how selling bonds at discount affects my income statement. It increases expenses and therefore it decreases net income eventually. Now the opposite happens if you sell your bonds at, at premium. If you sell bonds at premium, let me call it at 103. When we say 103, it means 103% of the price. And when we say uh, at, like this case, at 97, it means 97% of the price, which is this percentage. So at 103, it means that the cash that will be received, which is the price of the selling price of the bond, is equal to 1.03 multiplied by, so additional 3%, multiplied by the principal value of the bond. So you will be receiving $1,030,000. Okay? This additional portion, the $30,000, must be divided equally over the number of interest expenses and deducted from, ex from this interest expense. Unlike the discount case where you add it to the interest expense. So this is something good, it decreases my expenses. This is something bad, it increases my expenses. So this 30,000, so the 30,000 should be divided, divided equally on interest payments throughout the 20 years therefore every interest expense will be 750 dollars less and this number here is the 30,000 divided by the 40 payments okay so when you sell a bond on at discount you will divide equally, we call it amortizing the discount. You will amortize the discount over the number of payments and you will add to the interest expense. Something bad you've done, you need to pay for it. And it will appear in the income statement, which will reduce your, your uh, net income. However, when you do something good, you are able to sell your bonds at premium. This difference, the premium, which is $30,000, it will appear... Um, in the income statement as a less $750 from your interest expense. So now you're in your income statement, the interest expense will be equal 60,000 minus $750, which is 59,250. Unlike the discount case where it will be 60,750. Re remember that the cash payment is always 60,000. It's constant. It's the same between the discount case and the, uh, the premium case. Now I can start the, um, the accounting transaction. So in regards to the accounting transactions, um, as I mentioned before that we need to record the accounting transactions for four events. Uh, the first one is the issuance of the bonds, where the um, borrower receives the money and the creditor receives the bond. So the borrower is now liable. 
uh, on December 31, um, you'll have the accruing of interest expenses, which is the adjusting entry. Then on April 30, um, which is the first interest payment, which and this interest payments should take into account that you have incurred already part of the interest payment on, on December 31. And finally, October 31, 2040, which is the retirement of the bonds, where the creditor will, will receive uh, their money back. And at the same time, they will receive the last interest payment. So what happens here is that we will have uh, three cases where we are selling at par. We are selling at discount. And this discount was given at 97. So when we say at 97, it means that there is a 3% discount uh, in the selling price. So the cash that will the borrower will receive initially will be 3% discount than the face value. And finally, at premium. And we will also have a premium of 3%. So it will be selling at 103. The dates. that will be given and we will be solving as I mentioned for the three cases um, the first date is October 31 2020 which is the issuance issuance of bonds um, then the other the, the second date is December 31 also 2020 accruing interest expense accruing interest expense then you will have April 30 2021 which is the first interest payment so first interest payment and finally you will have the retirement of the bonds which is October 31 2040 here we retire the bonds okay so this is the first one this is the second one and this is the third one. Now, the par case is the simple case. If you get the par case, you can then get the discount and the premium properly and easily. So, at par, when you issue the bonds, you will receive cash. So, your cash will increase by debit and you are now liable by bonds payable. So, this is the liability, bonds payable. The value of the cash that you will receive at par is the same of the of the face value, which is one million dollars, and this is given in the question one million dollars. The uh, face value it matures in uh, twenty years. The interest rate, the annual interest rate, is twelve percent, uh, and and that's it. So cash is $1 million, bonds payable after 20 years is also $1 million. Now, uh, the semi-annual, I will just write it as a side note, the semi-annual interest payment is equal to 0 0.12 divided by 2 multiplied by the 1 million, and this is equal to $60,000. Okay. So, on December 31, if you think about it, from October 31 till April 30, we have six months. From October 31 till December 31, we have two out of the six months. So, if you draw a timeline from October 31 till April 30, 2021, and this is 2020, and you have the adjusting entry that should take place on December 31, 2020. Here you have two months out of the total six, total of six. So you need to accrue 
or incur the interest expense, the bond interest expense, which is equal to 2 over 6 multiplied by the $60,000, which is the semi-annual interest payment. So this will be 2 over 6 multiplied by 60000 is $20,000. This expense will be paid on April 30, so it's a payable. So bond interest payable, which is the liability, is also $20,000. Okay? So this is how we accrue the interest expense. Now on April 30, when the payment is due, you will pay in cash, this is the easy part, the cash, we know that it's $60,000, and this is constant all the time. You will always be paying $60,000 in cash every six months. Now, this payment of cash should offset the liability, so we are no more liable. So the bond interest payable decreases by $20,000 when you debit a liability you are decreasing this liability. And still we have four out of six remaining for the interest expense, which is the other part of the six months. So you still have to incur a bond interest expense of four over six multiplied by 60,000, or simply the difference between the 20,000 and the 60,000, which is 40,000. So now you have the sum of the debit is equal to the credit. On October 31, 2040, we have two transactions. In the first transaction, we need to uh, pay the last interest payment. And in the second transaction, we need to uh, retire our bonds and get to, to pay back the $1 million to the creditors. So on October 31, the, the interest payment, the last, the, the, the most recent interest payment was on April 30, 2040. Between April 2040 and October 2040, we don't have any Decembers, so we don't have any adjusting entry. So you will simply have a, you will have a simple uh, interest expense payment. So you will have bond interest expense, which is a total of $60,000 and a cash payment of $60,000. So if you think about it, this all October interest expenses are paid in a simple way. We don't have any accruals. However, April payments, they need to take into account that some of the interest expenses were realized or incurred, incurred in December, along with a payable that need, be, need to be offset. Okay, so all October payments will be simple, all April payments, interest payments, will have to take into account the adjusting entry that took place in December. And the reason for that is between April and October, we don't have any adjusting entries, don't have any Decembers or uh, end of years. So this is the last interest payment. We need to pay back the um, value or the face value of the bonds. So bonds payable which is the liability doesn't exist anymore we are removing it because we are paying in cash one million dollars okay so this way uh, the whole before transactions are done which comprise the lifespan of the bonds we issue the bond we adjust the entries we pay uh, interest payments and we retire the bonds. Of course, the, those interest payments will take place in each October and April of every year throughout the maturity of the bond. Now, when we have a case of a discount, the cash that will be received will be less than the face value. So you will receive a cash of 0 0.97 multiplied by $1 million or basically a 3% discount. So instead of receiving $1 million, you will receive $970,000. And when we say $970,000, we are basically taking into account the discount of the 3%. Now, when you issue bonds at discount, it means that you will receive less cash today and you will pay the same amount after uh, 20 years. So bond or bonds payable are equal to $1 million. 
So after 20 years, you will pay $1 million. The difference between the cash received today and the bonds payable is called discount on bonds. So obviously it should be on the debit side so that the debit is equal to the credit. Discount on bonds payable. And the value is $30,000. Okay? Now, as I mentioned before, when you issue bonds at discount, this discount on bonds payable, which is something bad, between quotations, something bad, this will affect your interest expense. So every time you will incur an interest expense in the income statement, you will have an additional value on top of the 60000 an additional value of 30000 divided by 40 payments. So the divided or the amortized uh, discount on bonds payable is equal to the $30,000, which is the total of the discount or the loss, if you want, divided by the number of the interest payments, which is 40 payments. So every time you will have an additional $750 interest expense on top of the 60000 Okay? So the semi-annual, the semi-annual interest expense is now equal to 60000 plus 750 which is 60750 $60, remember that this is the interest expense the payment is always constant which is the 60000 you will be paying an interest expense to the creditor of $60000 the interest payment in cash on the income statement, you will see this number, which is the interest expense. So the interest payment is different from the interest expense in the case of the discount and the premium. This value in the discount will be added to the interest expense. So your expenses are higher and your income, net income is lower. In the case of the premium, it's the total opposite. This value, the 750, will be deducted from the $60,000. So now, your... Um, your accrual on, on December, you should incur a bond interest expense of 2 over 6 divide, but multiplied by 60,750, which is equal to 20,250. The payable that will be paid in, on, on April in cash, the bond interest payable, the bond um, interest payable is constant. All all payment of, of cash are constant, which is twenty thousand, just like this one. The difference between those two is discount on bonds payable. Discount on bonds payable, which is two hundred fifty dollars. Basically, the discount on bonds payable should be, for each six months or semi-annual payment, 750 But this amount here, the 250 is simply this one here. It's simply V2 over 6 multiplied by the 750 which is 250 So everything here is being multiplied by 2 over 6 because it's 2 out of 6 months. So everything will be multiplied by 2 over 6. This as well, this 20,000, as I explained over here, it's 2 over 6 multiplied by 60,000. Okay? So it's a full transaction multiplied by 2 over 6. In April, we know that the cash that will be paid is 60,000. And we know that we need to remove this liability. So we will have bond interest payable of 60 of sorry 20000 which is this liability that we recorded in december okay what about the remaining portion of bond interest expense bond interest expense we still have 4 over 6 of the 60 
750, which is equal to 4,500. So if you sum this 4,500 and this 2,250, you will get the full amount of the semi-annual interest expense, the 6,750. Okay, so if you sum these two and deduct them from this, you still have a 500 difference that should be credited, which is what? It's a discount on bonds payable, the remaining portion of the 750 after incurring the 250. So discount on bonds payable, $500. Okay? Now, on October 31, the same thing we need that should be done. The difference is that between April and October, we don't have any adjusting entries, so there is no need to have a payable. You will simply have bond interest expense, the full amount of 660750 The payment will be a cash payment of, which is constant, $60,000. The difference between those two is the 750 which is the uh, discount on bonds payable. So discount on bonds payable and this is a 750 the other transaction will simply retire the bonds so you will have bonds uh, bonds payable which is this one here one million dollars and a cash payment of one million dollars so if you think about it here, this $1 million in cash payment was received initially as $970,000. So this is the discount that we are suffering, and we incurred it by discount on bonds payable throughout the years. We amortized it or divided it equally over the payment, the number of payments of interest, and it appeared in the income statement throughout the years. Okay, finally, at premium, the cash that you will receive will be more than the cash that you will pay after 20 years. So here you will receive $1,030,000, which is basically this number over here is, is computed as 1.03 multiplied by $1,000,000, just like we computed this discount thing. The premium is the same case. You will pay it after 20 years as... Uh, bonds payable and the value is one million dollars the difference between those two is the premium on bonds payable just like we had discount on bonds payable the discount on bonds payable is debited because discount is something bad which decreases owner's equity through decreasing net income so it's on the debit the premium on bonds payable is something good for owner's equity so it's on the credit it increases just like owner's equity increases and this premium on bonds payable will decrease interest payments interest not payments interest expenses and eventually increase uh, net income which also um, causes an increase in owner's equity now the amortized or divided amortized premium on bonds payable is equal to 30,000 which is the difference divided by 40 the number of interest payments it's 750 I did this deliberately I discounted 3% and premiumed 3% so that we have the same amount just to make the explanation easier it shouldn't be the case all the time it can be different it can be 105, 102, it doesn't matter. So now we know that the semi-annual interest expense is equal to 60,000 minus 750. So now my interest expense is less than the uh, cash payment, which is the 60,000. In the discount case, it was higher than the uh, cash payment. So here, as if I'm penalizing myself here, as if I'm treating myself in a good way. So this is $59,250. Okay, so 60000 minus 750 Now, if you want to do the same 
on December 31, we need to accrue two out of six of the full uh, interest expense. So bond, bond, interest expense is two over six multiplied by five nine two hundred fifty, or simply one third, and this is equal to nineteen seven fifty. 19750 this is a payable of bond interest payable a liability which is constant is to uh, 20000 uh, the difference is 2 over 6 of the 750 which is the 250 premium on bonds payable that will be debited premium on bonds payable and this is debited by 250 when you are solving a problem or in the exam or whatever try, try to start with the it's advisable to start with the constant uh, transactions which is the payables and the cash when you start with the payables and the cash you can lead or find your way through by doing the accrual for um, for for the interest expense and then the remainder, you will know where to place the premium on bonds payable or the discount on bonds payable. Now on April 30, 2021, the first interest payment, you know that the cash is a constant payment of $60,000. And this is what I said here. You are advisable to start with the constant, uh, constant parts. Then you need to get rid of the liability. So you will have bond interest payable of 20,000 because you paid it all of it on top of paying the remainder of the interest expense you're left with a bond interest expense as 4 over 6 multiplied by the 60 sorry by the 59 250 which is this interest expense and this will give us 39500 39500 so now if you if you sum those two you will get a 59500 you still have $500 to reach the balance so this will be the premium on bonds payable of a $500 or simply 4 over 6 just like this one multiplied by 750 which is the 500 finally on October 31 2040 where you will retire, retire the bonds we need to pay the last interest payment which doesn't have any accruals in it because between April and October we don't have any December's or adjusting entries and also the other transaction is to pay back um, our creditors so your bond interest expense we know that it should be 59,250 your cash payment is constant at $60,000 the difference is the premium on bonds payable which is also computed as 750 now the redemption of the uh, redeeming the bonds bonds payable we know that the value is one million dollars just like we had it over here and the cash payment is also one million dollars remember that here we paid uh, cash after 20 years less than what we received initially this is the end of the chapter thank you and i'll see you with a new chapter